Here's this coffee can guitar that's going to Oklahoma. What a what a cool can. I found this at a yard sale or where I lived. You just go look for the nails. Old men always threw this stuff, uh, save coffee cans, because most of them that went through World War II um, went through rationing, metal rationing and stuff like that. So, yeah, that was a good find. And um, I put the matchbooks on it. And now what we're doing is we're about ready to start wiring up uh, and soldering up all the connections. Now, you have to think ahead on one of these because when you put the pick up here, it's got to go through the body of the can. There's going to be some wires sticking out. So what I've done is I've wired this up. I use shrink wrap wherever there's a bend or wherever it can be in, in touch with something. And then I've cut pieces of canning lid. When you do uh, this part, you've always got this piece left over. You could use a Christmas cookie tin or whatever you want to use. And you cut these little strips, put two holes in them, and make sure that your wiring is here. Like I said, you have to think ahead. I've got a piezo underneath here. Um, and, and so you're always looking ahead as to where you're going to get uh, down to this point where you're going to start soldering and making connections and stuff. So um, I've got wires running from this pickup through the can. I've got the piezo uh, wired up running out of the can and I've got my ground hooked up and running out of the can and of course I made these long enough where I can do my soldering right here. So I've got a couple holes to drill and this is about showing you how to wire one of these things up. It's going to have like I said a piezo underneath here and this coil here so we're going to end up with two volume controls and two jacks. You can control these things separately. Um, it's a trick I learned off of Bob Log the third. Um, you can hook up to two different amps. You could put wireless. I'm going to make sure that my jacks are far enough apart so I can put a wireless unit or whatever I want to do here uh, and not have them in contact or in conflict. I also want to make sure that when I'm doing this stuff, I never want to put anything on this plane right here or here because if I lay this down that way, things are going to get damaged. So we also want to make sure we want to put them up here. I want to make sure that I put the volume controls where the artist can get to it. And then also the jacks are going to go where it makes sense um, to have them where they just plug in over here. Um, and I you'd like to use this reinforced strip here uh, to put the jacks on. So I'm going to walk you through this piece by piece starting with the parts. Okay, I want to tell you, I use shielded wire. Um, this stuff is pretty cool. It looks rustic, um, and you just push the cloth covering back. It's pre-tinned, so it's easy to solder. I hope you can see that. I buy this in bulk, um, and like I showed you before, it, it gives you a nice rustic look, um, and, and it's cloth covered, so it's durable. Um, next, always have um, a lot of uh, shrink wrap. I've got different sizes of it, some big, some small. You can see that I use shrink wrap. You can't see it, but I've got shrink wrap of a small size hook in each of these wires. There's kind of a thin wire that comes off of this coil, um, and then I cover it with this. Anywhere where there's metal contact or connections, I want to make sure that it's shrink wrapped. I don't need this coming apart on an artist uh, later at some point because it will become a wall hanger. Now, if you're going to solder, a couple things. Always have a file so you can keep your tip clean. Clean it off, get it shiny before you start, and then have a wet sponge because as you're going along in soldering, you want to kind of do that. Clean it off, use the wet sponge to do that. Um, and then, of course, a thinner gauge solder works well for me. Now, I've done episodes on wiring a um, piezo pickup as well as a coil pickup. You've seen me use these flat uh, mount humbuckers. This one is pretty cool. Uh, it would mount to a standard size fretboard, but I pop these off, glue them in. You've seen me use those before. I like the 750 pickup from uh, uh, MGB Guitars, and that is what is on here. Um, you notice that there's a cover, a wood cover. It's recessed. The pickup is recessed down in here, so it's really low profile. They also started making these covers 
in uh, wood treatments, thinner treatments, and stuff like that. So you want to check their catalog. I'll try and remember to give you a link below, as well as up on the right-hand side of your screen will be pop-ups and that eye for um, the pickups, uh, how to wire a piezo and a coil pickup, those episodes. Now, typically, when it comes to jacks, you see me use these pin end jacks. Um, you see me use uh, these long shaft uh, pots. Um, I use those because the Camacho boxes I use are usually pretty thick. Um, but when I'm using um, coffee cans, the stuff, I, I don't need this. It sticks way out. It's hard to mount. This is where I'll start using these kinds of jacks. Um, the pots are, are smaller. They're equally effective. Uh, but again, we're working with a coffee can here, not a, not a license plate or something like that. Um, and the scale's right. And I really like um, these chicken head um, knobs. Uh, they have a little hole right there that you put a, a screwdriver in and, and tighten them up. But you can see that they go pretty well here and the scale looks good. Now, they're going to be two separate volume controls. And I'm going to put those right here because the artist is going to be playing right here. And it's just easy to do this. Again, I don't want to put them anywhere near the center because when this sets down, they'll be in the way. So I want them to be off about over here. So I'm going to drill a couple holes. Again, I want to keep them up here where they're protected by things and not so much down here. So I'll put one about here and one about here, and that involves drilling a hole. Okay, whenever you're drilling through the can, in this case, it's going to be for the volume controls, pots, uh, one here and one here. You always want to drill a small pilot hole. And remember, this is thin. It bends pretty easy. So the closer you are up here, the better it's going to wear. So we just come in here with a small bit, drill a pilot hole here and then over here before we drill our bigger hole. All right, now you want to remember that whenever you're drilling through these, you're going to have some burrs to deal with both on the inside and the outside. And if I can find it, remember this puppy? Yeah, this is the best thing because you can reach down in there and knock these burrs off uh, before you put your potentiometers in. But we are going to solder up the potentiometers and get all the wires right and trace those out before we do that. Now, when I'm laying these out, I'm going to do what makes sense so people can remember. Um, I'm going to put the volume control pot for this pickup on this side, and then the one for the piezo that's under here, over here. Um, and while I'm thinking about it, uh, I kind of want to show you, because you can't see what's under here is, on these cans, there's a drop down. And that drop down was to hold this key here. You used to be able to pop this off and then unwind the top. But I glue this piezo down right underneath the neck. You can see where I've got marks for the neck right here. And I've used a jig uh, that I'm going to show you in, uh, in an episode um, called Coffee Can the Guitar Jigs. But anyway, that sits right down in here. And then I drill a hole off to the side outside of where the neck's going to sit. I don't want to crimp this. But I'll put this here and then run the wires down through a hole and then, of course, shrink wrap them. But that's what this would look like under here before this is all put on. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I know that this volume control is going to go, to go to the coil. And I got a lot of a mess here. The wires running through here. I've got them wound up so I know which one is which. But I want to trace these back. And I want to determine, okay, this one right here is going to go um, to the coil here. So the first thing I want to do before I forget is I'm going to cut a little bit of piece of shrink wrap. And I'm going to put it on the hot wire here. And I'm going to kink it just a little bit so that stays there. Because when I put this on here and solder it, I'm going to want to cover it because we all know that the hot wire from the jack is going to be right here. And I always put shrink wrap, so when I solder these up like this, they never have the possibility of touching other, each other. You don't have to do that with the ground, but I find that that's a good thing to do with your hot wires. Okay, guys, some suppliers 
uh, sell you these pre-wired um, input jacks, which is great. Um, but in the event that you have to cut a back or, or, or work with the ends um, in a way that they cause you to um, do something other than what they sent you, I want to remind you that this wire is loose right here. And when you peel this back, there will be a bunch of these strands sticking out everywhere. If you don't take the time to make sure you've got every one and you miss one and it's attached to this, you will have a problem that you'll never find. So always make sure that you pull this back and um, get that out of the way. Um, another thing is don't forget to put your shrink wrap over the top of this before you go back to your pot because once I solder this one onto the second pole here it will pop that back and fold that over yeah once I solder both of these then I just slide this down and they're protected and I can take my ground wire and work it where it needs to be All right, got both of those connections made. I want to make sure that now that ground wire is over there. Remember to pay attention to that. And I've got both of those sets of shrink wraps. Now, you know I use matchbooks and pull the matches out and flatten them out so I don't have a striker, right? Well, I don't need one. I got my solder hanging right there. Look at that. Ain't that sharp? So I just melt that like so. And those are protected. I'm going to pay really close attention here to make sure here's my piezo wires I don't I can bend them out of the way over here this is the this is my ground wire that's going back to the copper tape running to the neck to the canning lid in the back and this is my ground wire off of the pickup here so I'm going to twist these together and flatten them out as much as I can I can use this if I need to I want those to be nice and flat then I'm just going to oh, just put a spot of solder on there to make sure that they don't go anywhere. There we go. Nice and shiny. I want to show you another little trick here. See, this jumper wire goes from here, and I've soldered this. And it needs to attach to the top, like so, to ground everything to the back here. Now, you notice that I've cut this wire really long because I'm going to do myself a favor here. I'm actually going to use the tail of this once this is um soldered to the back to ground this i'm going to use this tail right here to ground everything else i need to i've got this ground wire coming off of my jack i've got the ground wire coming off of uh the copper tape on the neck back to the tail piece which grounds the strings and i have my ground coming off the coil so I'm going to put all those together and then attach those to there and save myself a lot of work because trying to ground three or four or make two or three or four grounding solders on the back of this small thing, not only does it heat it up and maybe make it malfunction and warp later on, but it's, it's difficult and it, it doesn't need to be that much of a hassle. So let me solder this on to right here. Plus, you can use this to kind of hold it down while you're soldering and, and to let it cool. You want to remember, if you're soldering and you got your solder right and this moves while it's cooling, you're going to get a cold uh, joint and you're going to end up with a buzz that you're, it's going to take you forever to track down. When you're doing this part, you want to take a second and do a couple of things. First, it's been a little bit since we've looked at the tip of our soldering iron we want to make, make sure that that's okay it's nice and clean and that's where that sponge that wet sponge comes in at and then also before we ground up all these uh wire all these grounds together and solder them solder them up we want to make sure that everything's not crossed up and it's really easy to track so there there we've got that i can wrap this around like so and before i hook all those to the final one I'll just quickly lay this on there like so and make sure that those are together all right those are all all the grounds are hooked together now I'm gonna make sure that they are 
soldered well so none of those can come apart and when I'm getting the other one set up I want to forget to clean off my soldering iron one more time once those all cool off I'll look at them and see if any of them come apart and that looks good again I want to make sure that everything is uh, set up where it's not crossing over each other this is why you don't want to wire several at one time now I like to put this pot in here and get it out of the way so I'm not confused before I go to work on the other one but I want to show you these potentiometers as you know have these little nubs on here which come in handy for keeping them in place with a uh, cigar box guitar or a wood frame box because you just drill a little hole and then when you put it in there it can't spin if somebody turns it too hard or something but I'm going to take this because this will not help us with the coffee can it won't seat and pop that off and then I'm going to double nut this I'm going to make sure that there is a washer underneath as well and then I'm going to double nut this up here and then I'm going to use Loctite when I put um the nuts on there so it never backs out. Of course, I'm going to take a, a, uh, wrench and tighten that down good while I got my hands up in here backing it up before that Loctite sits up and turn the volume down to zero and then I'll make sure that uh, I put a little mark on here with a, a sharpie or something so everybody knows where zero is on the volume. There we go. Okay, I'm going to save you some boredom here by telling you that the piezo uh, unlike the coil, the piezo wires up exactly the same except for one minor difference. We're going to put the hot wire from the piezo at the first lug. We're going to put the hot wire from the jack at the second lug. We're going to ground the third lug to the back of the potentiometer. We're going to take and ground the uh, ground wires from both the uh, piezo and the jack here but we don't have to ground back to the strings you don't have to ground a piezo and that's why some people or ground them to the strings and that's why some people like them other than that it's exactly the same okay it's not pretty but it's going to work and uh, nothing's going to pull off of there so I'll run this one up through the second hole and lock tight it and double nut it just like I did the other one. All right, there we go. Now all I have to do is put my two jacks far enough apart right there so I can use a wireless pickups or cables, whatever the artist chooses to do. So I'm going to drill a couple pilot holes and then get these hooked up. All right, the pilot holes are drilled. The bench is a little bit small for this. Let me see if I can get something out of the way here. We've got the pilot holes drilled. Now you want to remember that when you're using a big bit to punch these holes in, you want to make sure that your clutch is set down uh, and, and so it doesn't hang up and just take it easy. All right, there we go. Two holes for the jack. Yeah, look, there's a big piece of burr right there. So I'm going to take and make sure none of that's there and smooth this off with that uh, little belt sander that I have. And we'll put the jacks in. Now I want to make sure that I put Loctite on here. A little bit of that stuff beats everything. I'll put the nut here. I'm going to put the piezo uh, where the volume control is over here up in the top hole. And then again, I'll put a washer on it and um, double nut everything and make sure it's tight. Now, before I forget, I always want to make sure that my wires are faced up or out of the way because when you're putting a cable 
uh, on this in and out. If the wires are down here, it's not going to work out. So I always make sure that the wires are up and out of the way. And the last thing I'm going to do once I've got everything wired is I'm going to make little wraps. You could use, I use uh, little pieces of wire. You could also use small um, zip ties or whatever you have to make sure that the wires in here are all bunched up and out of the way. Um, you don't want those to be flopping around in there. Make sure they're secure. So I've got one more to put on here. Hey, I almost forgot. I got to put this grease zerk in here. Just in case your plan gets a little rusty. All right, guys. We are um, strung up and tuned up. G, D, G. Um, we've got... Two pickups here, um, two cables going in this could just as easily be um, two wireless uh, setups. We got the piezo up here, which is underneath the bridge, and we've got the coil here, which is right here. Uh, the benefit of this is it gives us the ability to, to blend our sound, whether we want trashy or really electric, and we start going to pedals and stuff like that. Uh, but this is a good setup where you got two separate volume controls. Again, the volume controls are up here uh, where the artist can get to them. And I put these here um, where they'll drape down out of the way. Uh, and again, nothing is on the front where if you set it down, it would be a problem. All right, I got a little fine tuning and do a couple frets to check out here. Um, but this is going to go off to its new owner in Oklahoma uh, very soon. Um, but I do want to share something you're really cool with you about one of my other guitars remember county fair guitar it's not going anywhere it's got all these signatures on it well I got another one last night you see that right there it says Cedric Burnside yeah I got to see Cedric Burnside play last night live um, and got a few songs off of his new album Benson County Relic I'm going to give you a link below to that look for it. it'll be a reminder at the end of the video but i filmed some stuff while i was there and i was fortunate enough also to end up with a couple of uh drumsticks signed by cedric burnside you'll remember uh, if you um uh, google burnside family you will uh see all of them sitting on a front porch in about 1978 and Cedric's a little toddler running around but I got to see him and it was a great show uh, let's close out by reminding you to give me a like below uh, subscribe to my channel don't forget to get notifications because every time I release a video it will automatically pop up for you and then I've got playlists my playlists are being sorted out by how to build a whole uh, cigar box guitar a coffee can guitar or necks or fretting or anything like that so i try to make it easy for you but uh, let's close out with cedric burnside cedric good to see you and talk to you last night man peace out my name is cedric burnside and i'm from holly springs mississippi i'll play a little mississippi blues hill country hope you like it